Hey, so I have um, a very, very, very lovely person here to talk to you today, uh, to talk with me. And uh, this is Nitsan Sitso, who's a very, very dear friend of mine from many years ago, around 20 years, I think I've known Nitsan. And Nitsan is one of the most inspiring people that I know, um, right from the beginning of my first knowing of Nitsan, he completely changed my life in the most wonderful ways. And I really wanted to bring Nitsan as one of the people that's being interviewed by Hannah and I, because I think you're going to love him and love all that he has to share. So without further ado, please allow me to introduce... Da -da -da -da! The amazing, Nitsan. the wonderful, the talented, the playful, the humorous, the amazing Nitsan. Yeah. Hello. Nitsan, I would love you to tell everybody who you are and what you do and what you bring to this world because I think uh, you say it better than anybody else could. Who I am. I'm coming to realize that the less I say, see that the trumpets are still blaring. Yes, the less I say, the more I shine. Um, but yes, words are, are important. So um, I have these parallel aspects of myself. One aspect is Nitsan, the performer. Uh, ever since I was uh, a wee child, my mother actually says that when I was in her belly, she was constantly laughing. Apparently I was tickling at her heart. Um, and I just came shuffling out and I've been performing professionally since I was 10. And so that would make it some 42 years of professional performance, be it as an actor, a storyteller, a dancer, singer in musicals and with symphonies and in movies and television and voiceover I've dubbed now tens of animated series. And um, so there's this theatrical element to me, which I love and appreciate. Um, and Ever since I can remember, as a child, at night, I would always pray to God. Um, and there was this kind of sense of something bigger and sense of love and wanting to be an angel. I specifically remember there was this TV show about angels. Um, Michael Landon was an angel. And every episode, he would go about and meet someone and change their lives. So that was my inspiration. And lo and behold, when I was 20... I met, and this is in the 80s, so this is before the whole New Age movement. Um, I met a healer and a channel. So there was no language to that. A, a channel of what? The only channel I knew was channels on television. So I met Sarah Paz here in Israel at the time I was living in Israel. Uh, she was this quaint, I believe she was in her 70s, South African woman who lived in this small house and the moment she opened the door, my girlfriend uh, persuaded me to go and visit her. I was actually a bit reluctant to say the truth because I had no idea what, what it was about. But the moment she opened the door, that was it. I was smitten. Um, she started talking to me about energy and healing, and being connected to the universe. And I had no idea what she was talking about, but this sense of, sense of excitement started welling up in my heart. And then she gave me a healing session. Now, again, I had never, you know, this is what, what is it? What do you mean the healing? Yes, I'll, trans, I'll transfer energy to you. And it's like, okay, I'll, I'm willing to give it a try. So just that sense of warmth in my body just suddenly started to shake. And that was it. That was absolutely it. I was smitten that night. Um, my girlfriend was lying, lying down next to me. So I sat up and put my hands on. Literally, it was like trying to force out energy and say, can you feel it? Can you feel it? It's like, I don't feel anything. But, um, and I said in that moment, when I grow up, I want to be a healer. This is what I want to be. So that literally changed the course of my life because my life was very much uh, just focused on, you know, being as successful a performer as I could. And in fact, I was quite successful at the time and uh, already had some contracts in hand, uh, but just something shifted so deeply. And I also become re became really aware of how unhappy I was. This, you know, you turn on the light uh, and you have to see what's there. And uh, I immediately realized, oh, I am so unhappy. I am so insecure. 
I am so afraid, I'm jealous, all these negative elements, which I'd kind of suppressed, but suddenly within this context, and I began going to a therapist at the time, and uh, she began talking to me about unconditional love. So, you know, everything just shifted, and that jettisoned me off onto my spiritual quest. Um, and that eventually took me to Fintorn, which is where I met you, sweet feet. And my goodness, there are so many stories there. I was really blessed with a lot of mystical, very profound mystical experiences that I could not deny. It was just so profound. I mean, early on, I woke up one night and there was a rose made of light. And I was like, <gasps> am I ready for this? Oh, I don't think so. And I went back to sleep. <laughs> or being with um, Sarah Paz in these channeling circles. I was this young guy and I'd never meditated but apparently she was channeling the white, she was connected to the White Eagle Lodge, which was actually connected to England, kind of old school metaphysics and spirituality. And they, so she was channeling or facilitating the circle that they had been, con been communing for like 15 years. This is back in the eighties, so starting in the early seventies. And almost immediately after I just met her, apparently she channeled that I needed to be a part of the circle. So like, huh, really? And so there I was suddenly immersed in this wonderful metaphysical experience. And then uh, the Saddam Hussein war started between Israel and Iraq, where mm. Iraq was sending Scud missiles over upon us. And they guided us to when we, meant, when we went into our closed rooms that we had to seal up because we thought there, there would be chemical mm. weapons. Um, we were guided to meditate and imagine this golden net above Israel. And lo and behold, over 200 of these massive scuds were sent and fell in populated areas and not one person was killed, which yeah. is miracle. a miracle. Yeah, literally. So, yeah. So, yes. yeah. So that, yeah. you know, just all these amazing experiences and wow, mm. I could go on and mm. on and on. Mm. So yeah that's it. And so uh, so over the course of the last 30 years i immersed myself in in-depth meditative uh, practices be it uh the awakening to your light body course taught by sanaya roman which is phenomenal um i became a reiki master a yoga and qigong instructor um i did so many workshops uh lived in findhorn i uh, did shamanic journeys lived with native americans i mean anything i could I could step into I was so hungry for it it was as if I'd been in the desert for so long and suddenly there was this oasis so I was traveling from oasis to oasis just mm. drinking in mm. as much as I could get and uh, I'm that took me to the states and took me all over the world and it was 14 years ago that again through this mystical experience and again I saw the rose I was guided to come back to Israel and um, which kicked my beep and mm. um enabled me to finally ground because i mm. had been journeying mm. into the ethers and in fact at one point i was in california and i wanted to go to this psychic healing school and i went to an introduction and uh the principal i guess she was speaking to maybe there were 30 or 40 of us and afterwards she came up to me and said can i speak to you in my office I was like ah, sure yes mm appreciating the extra attention so i went in there and she said okay listen um you know i this is she speaking this is what i do and i could see your aura and you're just, just this bright 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 being and you're like this flower with huge colorful petals but it was clear that you have absolutely no roots mm -hmm. so all that light won't help you if you don't if you're not grounded so go and ground you are not I am not accepting you into this wow. school. Yes. So lo and behold, I made yeah. my way back to Israel and Israel kicked my butt. And it's been a very intense, intense, intense. Mm -hmm. But as of the, the last year, it's like, ah, oh, something mm -hmm. shifted and settled. Mm -hmm. and here I am. You found your roots. You did. Yes. Yeah, yes. beautiful. And, what, and you know, wow, what a what a life! And and from what I've known of your last twenty years, I know yes. depth and the 
just the absolute passion and and mm. commitment that you have to your journey and to your to your opening and your flowering and also to helping other people in with theirs absolutely and absolutely. i know that that's a really big piece for you is is the sharing yes. of your wisdom and all that you've come to to know and i i'd love if you could share a little bit about you know all the different ways that you you know because i know you do you do a lot with health and nutrition and you do sort of qigong and you do um yeah there we go this is the mega smoothie the time oh. and uh you know you've got your acting school and you've got all these different things i'd love if you could speak a little to each of those maybe in some way and tell us about sure. your smoothie for, for starters um, i'm intrigued okay so first of all i have been drinking smoothies now literally for the past 30 years um when i had that big epiphany and eventually left israel i moved to new york and there I was, this actor, professional actor, but literally just kind of just felt as if, no, I'm no longer an actor. I, I'm, I'm in the, the, the spiritual zone. And I almost immediately found uh, a guru, Sri Chinmoy. And rather than go to Broadway shows, which you'd expect an actor to go to, I would go to, there's only like three or four health food stores. And for whatever reason, I was just so interested. I, I would literally walk up and down the uh, supplement aisle and just read the supplements and was always especially felt connected to algae for whatever reason and uh celtic blue green algae was just coming out at the time and uh, i almost immediately got a, a job at a um, health food restaurant which there were only like three or four in the city at the time this was in 90 1990 and so uh almost immediately food and, and just wellness choices, healthy habits mm -hmm. uh, became my passion. And I started learning everything I could about that. So, I mean, for me, it's all about healthy habits. So I start my day off with an, at least an hour of meditating, uh, then a cold shower. Uh, then I go off to the beach, which I am blessed to live uh, five minutes bike ride from the beach and I walk and I do my Qigong. And so there's, it's, it's an immersive lifestyle. Uh, it, it is, you know, every so often I will take on more and more elements. Um, as of late, I've been completely uh, um, inspired by Wim Hof and his uh, breathing technique and cold showers, which I've been doing for a few years, but then suddenly he put it uh, into such a clear perspective. So the whole wellness element uh, has always been something. And even though I never went to school and there was reasons for that, uh, which I won't get into now, uh, I, I always immersed myself in the study of it and I would just go hang out at the health food store. So I would, I'd be learning about things and no matter where I was working or, or what I was doing, I always had my green smoothie with me. So that almost immediately would set off a, what are you drinking? What, why are you drinking mud? And what, you know, what is that? That's disgusting. It's like, ah, well, let me tell you. And so the, the saying, you are what you eat, became really very much part of my life. And in fact, um, there, there was, I think this was in the later 90s, a book came out, Diet for New America, by John Robbins. And he created a non-for-profit organization to educate uh, with that. And somehow I got connected to them. And I've always performed a lot for kids. I had this kind of childlike and so at the time I was working with the Colorado Symphony and their children's programs and, and I was living in Denver. So I was part of the Denver Children's Theater and the Denver um, Children's Museum. So doing a lot of one man shows and storytelling in mime. And somehow they got wind of me and I wrote this whole album of songs. You are what you eat, my friend. Yes, you are what you eat. So be sure your food is a friend, my friend, because you are what you eat. Ba -da -ba -ba. The food it comes in many shapes and many colors and sizes too. Okay, I can go on and on and on. <laughs> so, you know, every, every place I went, um, you know, so there was always that element. But um, so as I started doing these shows, uh, especially in Denver, and I was immersed in this meditation and doing yoga practice and all these things, you know, I, I realized and I had a very clear vision that this was a part of my purpose to entertain, uplift and inspire the children of the world. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, uh, someone out of the blue connected oh. with me and she was a puppeteer. And she said, um, you know, I'm wanting to create the show. 
with this character called Nina Gadfly, who asks a lot of questions. So rather than do what she had intended, we started heartstorming. Rather than brainstorming, I am much more connected to the heart. And um, in fact, as of late, they've discovered uh, heart math. There's the in Heart Math Institute mm -hmm. and the brain within the heart. And so all these things that I always intuited are now really coming mm -hmm. out uh, as you know, scientifically uh, proven, et cetera. So rather than do what she had initially thought, we, you know, I was telling her about my passion about health and how mm -hmm. do we share this message. And we created a show called Earth Day is Every Day, where I play uh, Eco, an ambassador to Mother Earth, and uh, gathering members of the ECOR, uh, which um, you know was this big uh, club that uh, uh, enlightened and educated and entertained, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, the children of the world, and, and taught them how to recycle and be environmentally aware and, and personally aware. So we created that show, which toured all over Colorado, was wonderfully successful, hundreds and hundreds of shows. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, I've always, and whenever I've, created my own shows there's always messages there's you know the story of the beautiful flower which perhaps you can send a link uh, or however it might be there's always I when I was 22 I, I you know I was I was a clown in high school I was a, a street performer uh, then in the army the Israeli army I was a performer so I was the the comic etc and when I made my way to New York, uh, this friend invited me to a rabbi, a very, very, very famous rabbi, uh, who apparently, turns out, was a storyteller. And he told a story, and literally that too, in that moment, changed my life. And I thought, oh, that's it. You know, because it was so immersive and to, you know, create this world just with words, etc. So um, I started telling stories. But more than that, I started writing stories, and um, there's uh, quite a few of them. And so, you know, the way, uh, so that's another way. And in fact, I was once invited um, to this interesting on rooftop kind of performance where it was primarily dancers would come and share their, uh, their new works, but they knew that I was very, you know, used, I was a physical actor, and so they invited me to come and tell a story. And amazingly enough, just prior to that, I connected with this YouTube video of a, a man who had uh, been a uh, comic book writer, and he went into the, the mystical path, and he was talking about it. And during that, he talks about the power of the word. And he was talking about abracadabra. Now, abracadabra is Aramaic, and it means I will create as I speak. So there is literally meaning to, wow. uh, it, it's usually said abracadabra, abracadabra. So he was saying how when you speak, these words, you know, enter the listener's ears, go into their brain and literally affects them from the inside out. And I suddenly realized the magnitude of that. And so I intended that night to be a storytelling shaman and to really be clear that my intention was to tell the story, but really to affect them in a positive way, which was always the intention, but it, it became even more mm. focused. Well, I told my stories and it was very successful. However, two weeks later, I was uh, standing on the street corner and I looked over and then these two girls looked over at me and they said, hey, you're that storyteller from the rooftop. And I said, yes, we're talking about that story right now. It's still, <laughs> a, we're still thinking about it and it's inspired us. I was like, yes, yes. So, um, I mean, just through all these, through my performance art, that's always been the intention. And um, so there's the yoga teacher element. Mm -hmm. um, I was teaching meditation. Uh, I became a Reiki master teacher mm -hmm. and I really appreciated uh, teaching Reiki because it really gave a, a, a nice, simple framework to understanding the energetic element and to, to open to that energy and to relax and to share the energy and it was a very simplified way of, of teaching the spiritual path. So I, I started teaching that all over the, pretty much all over the world at different times. And it's just gone and evolved. And as of late, I started teaching a course called The Conscious Actor. Mm. Where I literally yeah. combine it all. Sounds amazing. So it's, mm. you know, just telling them that, you know, the conscious actor, you know, we as actors are blessed because we have to be 
incredibly aware of our emotions and of ourselves. But if you translate to, as Shakespeare said, all the world is a stage, well, that's absolutely mm -hmm. correct. I mean, that's, you know, that is the case. Mm -hmm. So let it be so. So are you consciously choosing the roles that you're playing? Are you consciously choosing who you want to be and the stories and the, mm. and the other people in your life? So mm. somehow, you know, we obviously we go into improv and, and monologues, et cetera, but there's this constant uh, usage of the symbology of that as a symbol to the deeper path of being conscious. So yes, wow. yes, yes. But every, I, for me, everything, I mean, just this morning, as I was doing my Qigong, a woman stopped me and she said, what, are you dancing? What are you doing? I said, well, this is Qigong. Turns out that she's a doctor and we spent 15 minutes, you know, just chatting and I was, you know, able to translate it into medical terms. And she was so inspired and took mm -hmm. my number and well, hopefully. So I was teach. I teach Qigong courses and classes and I love Qigong. Um, I mean, even it's for me, feels more at home even than yoga because there's this lovely fluidity to it. Mm -hmm. And it's so uh, grounded mm -hmm. in nature. There's a really mm -hmm. strong sense of nature and I love it. So yes, so teaching Qigong as well and mm -hmm. so many ways. I'm sure I'm forgetting a few as well. So. Yes, yeah, I mean, yes. And, and I know like, you know, from, from the times I've seen people around you what a deep inspiration you are I remember that your first uh, performance that I went to to see you yes. perform and I literally my jaw was on the floor such an incredible in Findhorn in, in, the, yes, in the Universal in, Hall that's oh. right I, I couldn't wow. believe it I mean yeah I'm gonna put some kind of link like you say to yeah. one of your performances so people can see for themselves but um, yeah, always very beautiful with the message coming through as well. But, you know, your delivery, like what you embody when you're performing is incredible. It's like you really, that you just, you delight. That's actually what you do. I have watched an entire room full of people again and again, just absolutely mesmerized by your performance, you know, so. Well, uh, I, that word is very, uh, it's very accurate, delight. You know, and, and having connected to the light body, mm. you know, realizing, okay, my role as a performer is literally to channel that light yes. and, and that's what you lift. Do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. In and fact, that's what it's like. In one of the early meditations, when I just arrived in Denver, Colorado, which I was going to stay there for another eight, nine years and had such a profound uh, effect on me, um, I went to an 11 11 meditation. And, um, so during this meditation, you know, we're just, it's a guided meditation. It was one of the first guided meditations I did. And I suddenly found myself completely immersed in light and kind of a, a form of samadhi. And I was shaking and I, I literally couldn't come out. And I was uh, in this experience for some, uh, I don't know, a few hours because I was just completely immersed. But afterwards, a woman came up to me and no one knew me. She said, listen, I, I, while you were in that state, I had this vision of you on a stage and all this light is coming down through your crown chakra into your heart and you're literally radiating light onto the audience. And I'm like, oh yes, it's <laughs> beautiful. So that yeah. has since then been exactly mm. Mm. my intention. And so before I, almost every time before I, I go on stage, I will, I will mm. hold that vision and set mm. that intention, mm. you know, mm. make me an instrument of, of thy light. Yeah. Beautiful. And I love and yeah, which which leads me to want to ask the question because I know you're now doing um, uh, sort of conscious acting uh, teaching for for students. Like, can so tell us about that because that's really that sounds so fascinating. Like, what does that involve? What does that look like? Well, it um, it involves first of all, I'll I'll teach some qigong practices and some exercising so just to be is that me that's uh that that's you my yes, lovely pinging. it is <laughs> ringing all these wonderful opportunities oh they're inviting me to gigs so i'll get to that so um there's two sections of the class the first one is a warm-up and just that alone you know most people many actors etc they're they're really not connected to their bodies and i know that for you that is incredibly important 
So to begin making them aware of, okay, so as actors, this is our instrument. And if we're not taking care of this instrument, then you know, it won't last for as long as it can. And there's so many levels to it that we can refine and enhance and stay healthy. So there's that element. And then I have introduced the, the Wim Hof kind of meditation because it's short and really intense. And then I will guide them on a meditation uh, to their inner stage. And on that stage, they will see themselves as their ultimate performer self. And then they'll come down to the audience and we'll invite some subpersonality that might be insecure or have some kind of negative uh, belief system around performing or you know, all, all these elements. So they'll come, they'll, this is all a meditative experience. They'll in, envision that part of them coming onto the stage and expressing and then they'll interact. So I'm introducing that meditative dialogue of, you know, what are the personas? What are the subpersonalities? Uh, what are the masks that we wear? Uh, again, as, as actors, that's, that's our language. We know oh, I'm, this is my role for this uh, play. And this is, but even in life, we have different roles and we play different, you know, when I'm with my parents or with um, a certain friend or when I'm a lover, so all these different roles, we oftentimes disconnect or, or, or play completely different uh, types of roles uh, and are not necessarily aware that we're doing it and aware that we can choose which role we wish to play. So invoking that level of awareness of, okay, so what's in your subconscious, the insecurities, facing your fears, et cetera. And then we have this practice called checking in where it's as simple as it can be. They need to just stand in front of the group, you know, and just be very present and introduce themselves and maybe say something about themselves or something they experienced. And I will then begin to direct them and make them aware again of, are you aware that you're kind of leaning to the right or that while you talk, you're shaking or that your hands are, are locked behind your back and they'll Oh, no, I'm, I'm not aware. Okay, so take a deep breath and, and try it again. So, you know, that can last for hours. It's amazing. I, I love that process because, you know, it also brings out the intuitive part of me. And, you know, okay, so what's compelling that? And what's the story behind it? And we've had people, you know, there's elements of psychodrama that come up, you mm -hmm. know, just, you know, people that open up into tears to the extent and the intention is for it to be a very, very safe space. Um, so that they're allowed to really go very deep. Um, and so that becomes very apparent through my explanation and through, through time that this is a safe place because in order for you in Hebrew, the word for acting is literally to play. Mm -hmm. So in order for you to play, you need to feel safe. Uh, if we're not feeling safe, then, you know, the, the fight or flight mechanism comes up and you know, we start stressing and straining and we're not really present. Mm -hmm. So that again is such an important element of how can we unwind and unload and take off those masks and undress mm -hmm. those costumes mm -hmm. and just be present, you know, return mm -hmm. to that childlike nature. Mm -hmm. Just this clear, open presence. Okay, so what is the task at hand? I have to cry. Okay. You know, it's not crying that, you know, it's, it's, it's not playing that you're crying, but be able to just, you know, just to feel it or that you're really excited and happy that you can switch because it becomes, it's not that it's not real, but it becomes a, just a shifting into a different frequency, a different energy. And it's amazing to watch them feel empowered and, and get it and get it. So there's all these techniques, of course, to acting, but really for me, the, I'm wanting just to, because nowadays acting is really about being natural. It's just mm -hmm. about being you in a situation and being really present. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, and that is the essence of life. You know, are you consciously right now, am I present with you, aware that, you know, this is being recorded and I'm sharing and how much energy I'm putting mm -hmm. out and, you know, finding the balance and, Mm -hmm. So this translates directly, and that's why I call it the conscious actor. You know, it's simply about becoming as conscious as you can to this whole inner and outer world that we each carry, that we as actors, you know, this is spirituality at its heart. Just be aware. 
be mindful. You know, the, the whole mindfulness movement. That's all it is. Um, there is a new course that I'm starting to give called Who is Afraid of Fear? Now, as a child, I literally had every fear in the book. I mean, fear of death, of course. Uh, even though I was an actor, fear of the stage, but somehow I was able to overcome it because the passion was so strong. Uh, fear of the dark, fear of monsters, fear that if I fell asleep, I would wake up blind or I wouldn't wake up. Uh, fear of uh, small closed uh, places, fear of heights, all this stuff. So th this was always, I, I, I found it hard to be alone in a house till my mid thirties. Um, you know, there was always this sense of dread and fear, et cetera. So that was always something I was consciously working on with all these practices and tools that I have uh, uh, gathered over time and it felt that it was it was time to really put something out there so uh it's a course called uh, who's afraid of fear um and it uses elements of the conscious actor that you know the number one of the top fears in the world is standing in front of an audience so uh so it's who's afraid of fear overcoming stage fright but really and in parentheses or any other fear for that matter um and so we use elements of the check-in and standing up in front of people but um, really to, to start utilizing these, first of all, to understand what fear is and, and that it's a very natural component until it becomes uh, used for mostly mental uh, elements, whether it's, you know, I'm afraid that people won't like me or I'm afraid um, I won't get that job or I'm, I'm afraid that I have a lack of money or I'm afraid, afraid, afraid mm -hmm. of all these things that are really not necessarily in our actual reality, but just that we're thinking about. And that's when the issue starts. So um, I've gathered lots of different tools and practices, be it uh, the meditation element, um, especially uh, the, the consciousness element, the awareness element, but there is uh, EFT, which is amazing, emotional freedom technique, which is uh, something that came out, I don't know, five or six years ago. It had its, it, it was having its heyday and I actually, it was probably more, maybe more like 10 years ago. And in fact, that was around when I came back to Israel, I got a, uh, a starring role in an opera production with the Israeli opera, where I was the storyteller. So I'm basically the narrator in very high level Hebrew, which I always had an issue with. Um, whole nother story. Um, so <laughs> just before one of the first opening shows, literally, I think it was maybe no more than five minutes before curtain, I com had a complete meltdown panic attack. I mean, I'm literally shaking and mm -hmm. unable. Oh, it's like, oh my God. And of course, thinking the worst things. Now, luckily I have, I've had already had 25 years of all this meditative experience. So I'm aware of what's going on. So then, oh, okay. Do EFT needs some, do EFT. So I, mm -hmm. I did one and a half, not even two, one and a half rounds of EFT I'm calm. I mean, literally my heart is just shining and I went and had one of the ultimate shows of my life. I and mean, there was not an ounce left of fear. I was able to completely shift out of it. So that literally, so afterwards mm, I thought, yes, one amazing. day I'm going to have to teach this. Yes. Now I have this story. Yes. So, and I'm so really you are. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. Really wow. And and so what what kind of people are are these mostly people who are wanting to act who come to you or do you get people just who are wanting to overcome fear or is it you know what kinds of people? Well, I would love my intention. I mean, my intention has always been uh, to inspire, and uh, that obviously covers the whole gamut. So when I was teaching Reiki and and teaching Qigong and these things, uh, it was you know just general population. Uh, but then I started somehow I was, every time I'm meant to do something, I get invited to do it. So uh, prior to singing, I had not sung. And so I, I was, uh, you know, cast in a musical. So I'm, I'm literally thrown into the deep end and told to swim. So, and this has happened with so many things. So um, I started being asked to teach these acting classes. And of course, with all this, you know, spiritual know-how, I said, you know what, I don't necessarily want to teach acting, but let me, let's bring it into that direction. I'd like them to, you know, I'd like to bring awareness and, 
et cetera. So that began to develop and eventually became the conscious actor. Uh, and so I'm kind of known now in those theatrical circles. So um, right now, you know, these are actors or these are people who would like to bring out the creativity, but my, my vision is to start teaching it on a broader scale. And um, in fact, I was meant to do that, but then Corona came along and uh, <laughs> shut everything down. So, um, but for me, this, uh, wow, the last four months have been just, uh, with all due respect to all those who've gotten sick and, and passed, this has been such an exceptional time because I was literally allowed to be a, a full-time monk in the heart of Tel Aviv. Literally, the streets were empty. Uh, I, I literally had a schedule, this monk-like schedule, and I would then go to the park. No one was around do, be doing my Qigong. It was completely quiet. So it was yes. incredible, and that literally has jettisoned me into all these wonderful new possibilities. So for me, that was like a, a bridge into what's now becoming uh, what seems a lot uh, uh, more grounded and uh, uh, many new opportunities are going to start coming to teach and to, sh to show up and inspire. Which Yes, amazing. That is so exciting. Yes. And, and um, you know, just in terms of like with your Qigong teaching and that kind of thing, I, do, do you run online classes or do you do anything like that? I'm wondering if we could get you on to do a maybe like a little slot where you did a, a Qigong workshop for us? Yeah, and, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's possible. I, um, I started, I mean, I've been uh, acting on camera for all these years, so I know how it is to be in front of a camera. Um, I appreciate the in-person element. However, because uh, Corona really, you know, uh, jettisoned Zoom into the forefront and everyone is teaching all these things. So it's become kind of a norm. It's not yet my cup of tea. Uh, I mean, obviously, chi is such a personal thing and you can feel it and, and see it. And there's so many little intricacies, you know, for me to see a student and notice that they're a little stiff or not really. Um, so even though I teach it in a way that it's the form is, is less important than the intention. So if I can convey that and, you know, just, mm. you know, the fact that you're moving is already creating flow. That's really mm. what Qigong is about. So no matter how or what you do, in fact, that's what I was telling the doctor this morning. You know, I was saying you're already practicing Qigong by the fact that you're walking. You know, walking is one of the, the ultimate Qigong practices because you're, you know, swaying your hands from side to side and moving your hips and, and moving. So... But the short, the short answer to that is yes, of course, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I could never say no to you, B, but, um, uh, but I, I definitely prefer doing it uh, in mm. person, but mm. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm open. Yeah, yeah. I actually did a few, I shot a few uh, videos of me doing it uh, during the Corona time. And mm. uh, I have uh, one woman writing me every so often saying she's still doing it three mm. months later and using that you know, every day. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, if you, so I'm yeah. back to that in, yeah. initial TV series of me inspired to be like Michael Landon, uh, <laughs> being that angel to inspire people and kind of mm. shift how they perceive mm. that, that's still, so if that's, you know, if that, if this is the medium, I'll do it. You know, yes. it, there's no, there's no longer any limitation, no, yeah. no limitations. Beautiful. Wow. Well, I think, you know, for anybody listening to this, I'm sure they've received a huge, huge amount from all that you've shared. And, and perhaps um, I'll include some links uh, with this of, of different elements of what some you do stories. so they can see. And, uh, and maybe we could get you back to do a Qigong class sometime. I want to come to England. In fact, I will come to England and you and I are going to be teaching, and yeah. there is there's a lot coming for yeah. this. You know, that yeah. I, I envision, and as you know me, I love to envision, and oftentimes it's true. It usually uh, those. <laughs> yeah, I I have to wait patiently for them to come true because yeah. usually when I suggest something, they'll say, "What are you crazy? What are you talking about?" And lo and behold, you know, at some point, it's like, "Yes, it's happening." 
So, um, but I absolutely envision, uh, in fact, I just connected with someone in Glastonbury who would like to bring me out there and uh, have these kind of uh, retreats, et cetera. Okay. I so yeah. love Glastonbury. Uh, just, it's such, that's where I connected to Gwen and the, the whole uh, Holy Grail myth mm. and that experience of the first time going up the, up the tour and just stopping on, at the beginning of the trail and then envisioning this monk saying, hey, who are you? And he's like, okay, who are you? So I was trying to, you know, uh, telepathy-wise communicate and he, he kept shushing me up. And then when I reached the top, there's a plaque there that talks about that there had been a, it, there was a, a monastery there for silent monks. So Amazing. <laughs> so all those types of mystical experiences that everyone can have access to, but I have so profoundly, you know, been working this beautiful bio machine that just enables me to tune in and intuition and psychic abilities and all these things. It's just we all have it. The question is, do we develop it? Do we listen? Yes. Do we, are we relaxed enough to, yes. to hear and, yes. and be conscious? Yes. So. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Well, thank you so, so, so much for yes, sharing yes, what yes, you have. And pleasure. it's been an absolute joy and delight to listen to you. And yes, Always we should pleasure. see you again very soon. Yeah. That'd and, be wonderful. Yeah. And thank you so much. So much love to you, beloved. Love, 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 love. 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 Bye. Bye.